Hey guys, welcome to the Atomicrafts modding tutorial. Before anything else, I just want to say that I do have explicit permission from Danny Wynn, the guy who made the game to make this video. Alright, the first thing we're going to do here is download and install Bepinex. That's what we're going to use to load our mods. So just click that link in the description, it will download that for you. And once you have that downloaded, it's going to be a zip file that looks something like this. So right click on it, click extract all, and then hit extract and it's going to open the extracted folder for you. Now we're going to open the game's root folder. So click on Steam, right click on the game, go to manage, and browse local files. It will open this up at the bottom for you. So this is the game's root folder. So what we're going to do is drag and drop everything from this folder into the game's root folder. And now that that's installed, we're going to start the game and quit out. This is just going to allow Bepinex to create some extra files for us. Now we're pretty much ready to download and install mods. I have a Discord server linked in the description where you can download mods in this mod downloads channel. Mods are going to be DLL files like this or zip files that you're going to want to extract after you download them. And once you have them downloaded, how you install them is by putting them in Bepinex and this plugins folder right here. You're going to put them in here. As you can see, I already have four installed. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you just want to download and play mods, you're pretty much uh, good to click off the video right here. But if you want to learn how to make them, then keep watching. So now we're going to talk about what you need to do in order to actually make mods. Um, some prerequisites are that you have some basic programming experience. You're going to be writing C sharp code. Um, there are tools that can help you out such as chat GPT and stuff like that so as long as you can read the C sharp and understand what's going on and what you want your code to accomplish then you can use stuff like that to help you out um, and you'll probably be fine we also have some resources here in the discord we also have a help channel right here so you can ask whatever questions you want to the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is go to the games local files and then you're going to go in this Bepinex folder, config, and then there's going to be this Bepinex.config file. You're going to right click on it, open it with notepad, go down to logging.console and change this value here from false to true. I already have it set to true and you're going to save and close this. What that's going to do is whenever you run the game, in addition to opening the game, it's going to also open this uh, logger right here. This is just super helpful for debugging and just sending out information from your mods. This is an optional step but I really recommend it. The next step uh, is to optionally download Unity Explorer. Click the link in the description and it'll download that for you. And once you've got that downloaded, um, just extract it like we did before. Okay and then once that's opened up we're going to go to plugins and we're going to take the Sinai Dev Unity Explorer and put that in our plugins folder. So we're going to install it like you would any other mod. So in the Atomicrops go to Bepinex plugins and just put it, drag and drop this in here. I already have it in here. And this is actually a really cool tool um, that you can use to kind of help you better understand how the game's code works. Let me just pull up the game really quick and show it off. Alright, so if you notice this big box over here pulled up when I opened the game. This kind of is just like all of the objects that are currently loaded in in the game and you can like mess with them and stuff like that. So let's say for placeables I want to turn off the tutorial sign for whatever reason. Click this right here and the tutorial signs on and off. You can also like inspect them and like see what it's made out of and stuff like that it's a really cool and really fun tool but it's not necessary so if you don't want to download it you don't have to the next thing that you're going to want to do is to download dnspy this is going to allow us to look at the game's code so when you download it and extract it it should look something like this how you run it is by clicking this dnspy application right here i find it helpful to create a shortcut for it just like this and then dragging this and putting it on your home screen. I already have one right here, so I'm not going to do it again. All right, and then when you launch that application, it's going to look something like this. You're going to want to go to File and Open, and you're going to want to navigate to the game's root folder. 
Here's the file path right here. I'm going to flash it on the screen as well. And once you're there, go to Atomic Crops Data, Manage, and then open this assembly, C Sharp DLO. And then over here on the left, you're going to want to click on this arrow over here to open it up and do it again. And then all of the game's code, for the most part, is going to be maintained with, or is going to be within this dash file right here. There's also a lot outside of it. And then what this is, is just the entire code of the game. Um, these are the methods that we're going to be patching um, when we make our mods. So this is really, really important to have. Next, what you're going to want to do is download the latest build of .NET. This is what Bepinex uses to turn your project files into DLLs that other people can download. So what you're going to want to do is click the link in the description. That's going to take you here. Then you're going to click on Download and click this right here, .NET SDK X64 right under .NET 7.0. And that's going to start a download for you. It is pretty big, so give it a minute. And then once you've got that downloaded, it's going to look like this. And you're just going to want to click on this and follow the instructions to download.net. All right, and the last thing we're going to download is an IDE to write C Sharp code if you don't have one already. There will be a link in the description. As always, that takes you to this page for Visual Studio 2022. This is the IDE that I recommend just because I use it. There are plenty of others out there. You can use whatever you want. But if you're going to use Visual Studio 2022, you just go to Download, click Community 2022. It's going to start a download down here. And once that's downloaded, it's going to look like Visual Studio Setup. You're just going to run this application and follow the instructions. After doing all those downloads, we can finally get into the meat and potatoes of actually making a mod. So when you want to make a new mod, what you're going to do is go onto the Discord and download any of these mods right here and use them as a sort of template. Or if you've made a mod before, you can just copy it and use that as a template. It doesn't really matter. Um, let's say we do add item.zip, for example. We're going to download that and extract it, and it's going to look something like this. And what we're going to do first is we're going to go into the c -sharp project file. It might have a different name than template, but just know it's the one that's not plugin.cs. We're going to right-click on it, open with, and notepad. And we're going to change this name right here to whatever the name of your mod is. This is very important. Feel free to also change the description and the version if you want to. But just know that you have to change this name right here for it to be compatible with other mods. And you're going to save that and then exit out. And then in this plugin.cs, we're going to open that up using our IDE. And this is actually where we're going to write the code for our mod. I'm not going to go over all of this in detail right now. In the Discord, all of these are pretty well, well commented examples. And for the uh, add item one in particular, I do have a little video that kind of shows off how it works. Um, the most important thing to know really is that we're using a library called Harmony, which allows us to post fix and prefix uh, functions in the game's code. Prefix just means we're going to run our own little snippet of code before the game runs its function. Like let's say we want to change arguments or something like that. Um, we're free to do that, and for postfix, it's the same thing, but it runs after the original function runs. Um, one really important thing is that you change this plugin.guid. Um, if it's the same as another mod, it won't work. So just make it something that you know will be unique. Uh, what I like to do is just make the first thing my name, then do a dot, then plugin, then a dot, and then the name of the mod. That's just what I like to do. You can do whatever you want, though. And then once we have that all written, what we're going to do is go back into the project folder and in this bar up here we're going to type in cmd that's going to open the command line and in here we type dot net build and then we press enter and if this runs without any errors we can go back into our project folder go to bin debug that's standard 2 and this dll is going to be here it's not going to be add item in whatever uh, instance you do it's going to be the name of your mod dot dll and then this is our mod we can um, you know, just copy and put that into the plugins folder in Bepinex, and it'll work. Um, or if you want it to be on the mod downloads page, what you can do is put it in this mod submissions page, and I'll check it out. And if it's all up to speed, I can add it to the mod downloads page. And that's all I've got today. Uh, thanks for watching. And I'm... I'm not under the impression that everything I'm doing is perfectly right or it's like the best way to do it. I'm still new to this myself. So if you have any suggestions on what I could do to improve any of this, I'm more than happy to hear it. Um, 
this is going to be a learning experience for all of us so hopefully we can come together as a community and uh, make modding a bigger thing um, for now I'm going to host the mods here but if it becomes an actual popular thing we can always you know put them somewhere else this is just what I decided to do because I don't really know where else to put them um, everything's subject to change I will leave updates in the description if anything changes um, but yeah that's all I got happy modding